First off, he says, tonight is also a moment for us to reflect on what it means to live in a society where elected leaders still settle our disagreements by and large with civility and compromise. Which I find funny coming from Gavin Newsom because he does make a, a habit out of bullying people on Twitter and making snide comments on Twitter about everybody he doesn't agree with. So I don't know how much civility and compromise he actually believes in. First topic he talked about, in January, we proposed to pause the gas tax increase. Now it's clear we must go further. That's why, working with the legislative leadership, I'll be submitting a proposal to put money back in the pockets of Californians to address rising gas prices. Who actually... At a time... Proposed, I'm sorry. Who proposed this? Was, was I don't think it was the Democrats that proposed to pause the gas tax increase. I feel like... No. The Republicans were like fighting hard for it, and Democrats didn't want to listen to us. No, I think that was definitely a Republican thing, and I think they were definitely pushing for that. It never happened. The gas tax has gone up every year since then. So, in terms of we proposed anything, I don't know what he's talking about unless he has a mouse in his pocket or something, because Democrats were not on board with a gas tax or pausing the gas tax increase. So right. that and never that happened. We had a deal that year. Like, it was a yeah. big, big deal. Yeah, because I think it was, what, 50 cents or something? They were like, hey, if we pause it, we save people 50 cents um, at that time, which is a lot of money. Let me think about it. I paid, we have this in our notes, I paid four ninety nine yesterday at the at the pump for gas at Costco, mind you. Not like an expensive place. At Costco, I paid four ninety nine. dollars um, You had in your notes, how much have you paid recently? Well, I, my husband fills up my car for me, but I looked at all my local gas stations, like seven immediately around me, and every single one was five thirty or more per gallon as of last night. That's insane. So we're already topping off at $5 at minimum. We're already talking off at five dollars, and I don't even live because... near like like I'm kind of far from the freeway. You know how like they can easily like this is the only gas station for miles, or this is the convenient one. Like I where I live, it's considered a bedroom community. Like people don't come here for tourist stuff. I guess the next to the library, but like nobody really comes here. You know, it's just people who live here. So it's not like they're like, ooh, we'll get our like. You know, everyone, this is the community gas station. We could just gouge prices. It's not like that. He goes on to say, that's why working with the legislative leadership, I'll be submitting a proposal to put money back in the pockets of California and to address rising gas prices. But at a time when we've been heating and burning up, one thing we cannot do is repeat the mistakes of the past by embracing polluters, drilling even more oil, which only leads to even more extreme weather, more extreme drought, and more wildfire. So... Um, there's a graph that I think people have seen. Let me see if I can pull it up. You want to talk about yourself? So I, I pulled the screenshot of it. So this is a graph that a lot of people have seen before. This is basically how much the state adds on to all the price of our gallon. So it's one thirty dollars a gallon. This is twenty twenty two, mind you. I'm sure it's only gone up since then. Well, yeah, because uh, so the gas itself every July, July first, and we have another little increase. It always goes up a little bit. And then two cents, 12 cents state and local sales tax, 25 cents for cap and trade, 22 cents for low carbon fuel standard, 18 cents federal excise, and 51 cents state excise tax. So a lot of that is state taxes. Now, if you remember, his big solution to solving this problem is was he wanted to wait for it he wanted to blame the oil companies and say that it's the oil companies who are gouging californians intentionally right because they don't want to gouge any other people in any other states so in florida they don't want to gouge people in florida in texas they don't want to gouge people in texas uh any other midwestern state nebraska they don't want to gouge people there but they have a vendetta against california and they've decided we're going to gouge prices specifically here by so much more. So this was, funny enough, this is actually a year ago, this article, March 27, 2023, in the LA Times. 
Uh, California lawmakers approved Newsom's oil bill. So here's what you need to know. After months of deliberation, the final bill does not cap oil refinery profits or penalize the industry as Newsom had intended when he accused companies of intentionally driving up gas prices to boost revenue. Instead, the bill, SBX12, gives the California Energy Commission the power to set up, set a cap and impose penalties through a regulatory process if it decides that oil companies are making excessive profits and that a penalty will not result in higher prices for consumers. Sounds like it does anything, or does it just sound like it's more regulatory oversight that won't do anything? Yeah, it just feels like volatile well, and watching. Because his big plan was he wanted to do this windfall tax profit. And we've talked about this before. Does a windfall tax actually do anything or windfall profit tax? That showed in the 70s, they tried to do that with Jimmy Carter. That didn't work. Most of the time, it doesn't ever really work. It doesn't, doesn't do what it's intended to do. It sounds nice. It's a buzzword, but it doesn't actually do what it, it needs to do. And this bill didn't even include it anyway. The legislation focuses on transparency, including requiring the industry to provide more information about maintenance and pricing decisions in order to allow state officials to better understand the market and deter companies from gouging consumers. Quote, even when we are not experiencing a spike, we pay higher prices than in other states, even when we account for our taxes and environmental policies, said Assemblymember Jacqui Irwin of Thousand Oaks, who noted that Californians pay as much as 260 more per gallon than residents of other states at one point last year. This is unacceptable. Well, if we look back at that graph, accounting for the amount of taxes and regulatory fees that actually go into a gallon of gas, I think the bill is not facing the right way. It should be looking inwards rather than outwards as to why gas is so expensive here. Uh, let's see. Limiting profits and placing additional requirements on refineries could drive companies out of the state, reducing supply and increasing fuel costs, the oil group said. Uh, the industry had urged the state to take more time to understand the bill's potential effects on supplies. So, instead of a cap approved by lawmakers, SBX12 allows the Energy Commission to establish a maximum gross gasoline refining margin and a penalty for exceeding that margin if they deem it necessary before setting a cap and penalty. The commission must find the benefits of doing so outweigh potential costs to consumers. So, so it's going to be that fast and same year, yeah, exactly a year. Has anything happened? I have not seen a report. I've not seen gas prices go down. I don't think I've seen oil companies shirk away from like this idea, you know, this idea of they're actually gouging them. I mean, yeah, today we're we're all paying over five dollars a gallon for gas. So I've definitely not seen gas prices go down. Uh there is a little bit more that I want to say. California's average gas price is not the only, not only the highest in the nation. This is from California Globe, uh, the article that you sent over. It is even higher than Hawaii's gas price per gallon, which to me is insane because Hawaii is supposed to have the most expensive gas because it's an island and there's no refinery. Like it's literally an island you have to bring oil to and gas to. I know they say California is like figuratively a island when it comes to refineries and gas, but Hawaii is quite literally an island and it's cheaper to buy gas in Hawaii. In October, 2022, Senator Shannon Grove of Bakersfield boiled down the actual problem of California's highest in the gas prices and gas taxes in a letter to the governor. The highlights are California's isolated markets, which I just said is kind of like an island, an inability to access additional fuel that meets California's stringent standards against the environmental policies, the most hostile regulatory requirements, the most aggressive environmental policies, the extraordinary expense of cap and trade, the highest tax per dollar of gasoline, and possible standards that are not found in any other state in the nation, and limited supply. So, in 19, although I thought this was really interesting because we've talked about this in terms of how many refineries there actually potentially are in California and how much they've shut down. And we've made this argument that if you want to, if you're all about protecting workers' rights and reducing carbon and the environment, you should be drilling for oil here. We need oil. Oil is something we definitely need. We need to refine oil. So why don't we drill oil here, ensure that workers have protections, they get a good wage, they have all that, um, they have the American employment law system protecting them. Also, it travels a far less distance. It's not coming from Ecuador or Latin America or any other country far thousands of miles away. 
accomplishes two goals, protect his workers' rights, creates great middle-class jobs and upper middle-class jobs, and it reduces carbon. So I don't know. Why don't we think about it that way? It's not the California way. It's not the California way to actually think about it. Let's produce more oil. In 1982, California had 43 operational oil refineries and a population of nearly 25 million. Today, we have only 11 operational oil refineries and a population of nearly 40 million. And those 40 million residents are driving more cars, living in more houses and apartments, working in more commercial buildings, shopping in more stores, and traveling more across the state, all of which, which takes more traditional energy. So there you have it. Um, so to answer the question, did he tackle the issue of rising gas prices? Based on these say that this beach in 2020. I would give that a no. Write those down because at the end, I mean, probably going to make a comment about all the things he promised and didn't deliver. Yeah, it doesn't sound like he fixed gas prices. Two years. I know he sent out. He sent out money, but that was two years ago. Yeah, was that what the Visa gift card things were? I think so. They were like just prepaid debit cards, which I don't think people were specifically using for gas. Um, it was but no credit, and it was, I think, up to 400 per vehicle, up to two vehicles per household. We didn't get any, I think we got two, or we got one. Yes, I remember and at first we were like going through stuff, and then like we found something, and I found something. I, I look at my wife and I go, You did it activate this card and she's like no i thought it was like junk mail i thought it was like a one of those junk mail credit cards i'm like no no this is like an actual card and she called up the number and they're like this is preloaded with a hundred dollars it's now active and she's like oh got a hundred bucks it's like it's our money anyway so uh this was interesting he brought up in the state of the speech he kind of did this like loosely based like uh drilling even more oil which only leads to even more extreme weather more extreme drought more wildfire he kind of tied drilling for oil to the wildfires that we experienced um i was trying to see if there's i mean of course there's plenty of things to say like yeah oil's bad and refining for oil is bad and for blues i've never seen any direct correlation between the wildfires happening and drilling for oil or how much we drill for oil here in California, it seems like those are not really like directly connected. It's not like the well, drilling starts the wildfires. There was lots of fires. When I remember one of the really big fires, PG and E took credit as obviously not the word fault. They admitted fault. Yeah, it was their responsibility. And um, and obviously it's not all the fires, but um I do know that. California is really bad about cleaning up the brush that, you know, ignites easily during a hot summer. And we don't store water that we get during our very rainy years. And so we yep. don't have available water. So, yeah, I don't know how you can blame that on oil. I mean, it's a tangential, it's, it's a tenuous argument. You can say, well, drilling for oil might cause carbon and global warming, which is still a whole debatable issue anyway, but to directly cause and say like, oh, oil is why we have wildfires in California. It's a real tenuous stretch to say that yeah. they're connected somehow. They're not, I mean, if your argument is, well, we got to get rid of oil and you have to pay $6 at the pump because we have wildfires. It's kind of like, eh, why don't, or you could just do your job and like, you know, protect forests and actually do forest management and have plenty of water. That's a novel idea too. And not just blame it on oil because we all know oil, big oil is always the big boogeyman for Democrats. They, they've they been going after big oil since they even started following politics. It's, it's always the big boogeyman is big oil. Um, but his solution, because we don't want to have people use gasoline or oil anymore in their cars, is obviously electric vehicles. He goes on to say, Underscoring the importance of accelerating California's leadership in clean technology. And I apologize to everyone out there. I don't do a good Gavin Newsom impersonation, so I'm just not even going to try. <laughs> it's too raspy. My voice would hurt. This is not, a, not just a national security and environmental justice imperative. Clean energy is this generation's greatest economic opportunity. 
A perfect example are dominance in electric vehicle sales and manufacturing. It was California's policies that created this market. Now we have the opportunity to extend this leadership to secure a critical component of the supply chain for batteries by tapping the world's largest lithium reserves right here in California. So right there, there's always this concern about actually mining lithium. It's like messy. You have to use shocker. You have to use trucks and equipment that are powered by oil to actually get the lithium out um, to create the batteries, creates a lot of carbon. So it's not an absolute clean operation to go get that lithium. Our nation leading climate investments, 38 billion, will ensure that other innovations will surely follow, not by recreating the 20th century by extracting more oil, but by extracting new ideas, drilling for new talent by running our economy on a carbon-free engine. It's a cute use of words right there. <laughs> for new talent. <laughs> His speechwriter must have thought they were really like clever when they did that. They were like, I got this is gonna be good. And I'm gonna use like oil terms to talk about what we need to be doing. Um, okay, electric vehicles. This really isn't like Newsom's fault per se, but since then, do you think EVs have gotten more popular or less popular? Well, I think they're a little more popular. I think Tesla, people want Teslas. I think t people want Teslas just for the Tesla name. I swear if it was gas powered, they'd still be getting them. But the thing is, like, there's the tons around me. Um, I don't know about, I don't, you, you know, I don't go anywhere. So I don't know about it. <laughs> there's tons of Teslas on the road around me. People are still complaining about their inability to charge them. Yeah. So this year, I think EVs, the news is that EVs have hit a wall. EV okay. sales have hit a wall. Yes, people want EVs. They think maybe people think it's a good idea, but I think the reality of implementing it is much harder than they were expecting. And I think a lot of places who thought, and this is something else Gavin Newsom proposed, is that all cars in California are going to have to be electric by 2030. So we're, what, six years away from that. Um, and we have quite a long way to go before everyone has an EV. Now, that's not to say you can't like go no, buy a car. It just car sales. Perhaps, right. They don't have to be EVs by 2030. It's just you won't be able to buy a gas-powered car in California. That's what they're trying to do. I don't think they're going to accomplish that goal. I think that's probably going to be pushed off like five years. Every time we get close, it's going to get pushed off five years. Because it's just kind of... I, I just don't think it's logical. Yeah, I actually logical have an point. interesting observation about that. So we, you know, went out of the country a couple weeks ago. We... We um we drove. It's easier six of us and all of our luggage. It's easier for us to drive to the airport and park. And so we paid for like this one structure, and it's three or four levels. And the bottom level is primarily EV parking with the chargers. And um, it was mostly empty. I have I just took my daughter to her orthodontist appointment on Monday, and there's they had redone the parking lot recently with a bunch of EV you know charging spots they're usually all empty and it's so frustrating because i need a spot like right in front of the dentist no there's it's all ev parking and like i'm seeing that implemented more and more and there there's often like let's say six seven eight spots and there'll be maybe one car in them mm -hmm. so i understand yeah, we that a lot too. Ready, but but you're right like that means that the demand is not there yet right this is from forbes magazine uh, this came out oh, March 24th, a couple of days ago. Uh, in a sobering re revelation from a Boston consulting group study, the vast majority of potential EV adopters want three things to happen before they'll seriously consider switching from gas to EV. They want under 20 minute charging times, which has been a big concern, a 350 mile plus driving range, and a sticker price of under $50,000. With only one EV, the Hyundai I, I know, I know. I I don't even know how to say that. Long range, meeting those criteria, the industry has a long way to go. So it says, in the U.S., EV sales have increased since 2016. 2017, they were around 65,000 EV sold. And by 2022, that number had ballooned out to over 800,000 sales. Following an upper trend, EV sales increased 51% in the first half of 20. Still, those gains represent a decline from the 71% growth in the same period last year. In addition, Tesla, the market leader with over half of all EV sales, 
recently revealed its lowest quarterly profitability in previous two years, which caused a $138 billion decline in the value of the company's shares. Meanwhile, in Britain last year, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak made a major U-turn on the country's planned ban of gasoline vehicles when he announced that the government was postponing its introduction from 2030 to 20. But another company to maximize profitability, General Motors, has announced that it's pulling back on its plan to build 400,000 EVs by mid-2024. Two years ago, the company said it will phase out internal combustion by 2020. Plans to collaborate with Honda to develop a range of more reasonably priced EVs have also been scrapped. Executives at Ford said they don't currently require the production capacity to fulfill demand, thus they're postponing billions of dollars in EV investment. Finally, it goes on to say there's also strong evidence that shows most individuals who buy electric also own an internal combustion engine powered vehicle. Quote, they are not switching to electric vehicles from their gas powered vehicles. Most electric vehicles are bought as, quote, complements, not as replacements, according to economists. They're merely increasing the overall quantity of autom automobiles they have on hand. So this idea we're leading the way and we're plowing forward with EVs, eh, it's kind of slowing down at this point. I think um, more people are seeing that the infrastructure is not there. Like you said, it's just, it's not convenient. Hey, thanks for checking out the California Underground Podcast. If you enjoyed that clip, make sure you subscribe, like, share, review, comment, all that stuff that helps with the algorithm, helps people find us more. And if you want to learn more, you can always listen to our full podcast at Apple, Spotify, Google, all those different places that you basically find podcasts. Or if you just want to keep watching clips, you can check out clips here, or you can subscribe to our channel right here, somewhere in here.